empty the chamber on And how do you do that? Four, six seconds, 28 point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the Morning Scoop. It is Wednesday. It is Arkansas State Week. We beat Notre Dame. We had a wild, crazy, fun weekend. I hope you guys had a great Labor Day. Um, you know, it is hell, it's almost game day. It's Wednesday. We are going to be cranking it up and seeing hopefully some young blood this week. We've got uh, a couple injuries to talk about. Uh, we got some really tasty nuggets from inside the Woody Hayes that Nevada Buck is going to talk about. And uh, we're going to get this shit cranked up. So with that being said, as always, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. We are growing like crazy. This is our biggest YouTube day in the history of Buckeye Scoop. So thank you guys so much. We've had some humongous videos in the past. Not as big as today. So thank you guys as always. Um, for this video, in the comments, comment who do you want to see this week? Which young players? And also something that's real interesting to me, I was looking at our uh, the locations reviews. Where are you guys from? Comment you know, where you're from. I think a lot of you guys are Ohio-based. A lot of you guys are in Florida, uh, California. You guys are kind of all over the place. So let me know where you guys are from. Love to, uh, to get to know you guys a little bit better. Appreciate you guys, as always. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Uh, leave us a like. It's a huge help, as always. Subscribe to the channel. Spread the good word. We appreciate you guys. So that being said, bringing in my good friend, Nevada. Nevada, how are you? Um. I'm doing great. It's been a, a great week. It's so great to have the Notre Dame game behind us. Learned so much about the team. And uh, like I like the games like this this week. Not a lot of stress. We can go into it and uh, learn a little bit more about the younger guys and just kind of an, have an enjoyable game as opposed to the uh, Saturday night, which was a little bit more of a nail butter than I hoped for. I thought that game might be a little bit more lopsided in it. And uh and it wasn't, and, and it was a, 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 a tension the whole game, but I've got us behind us, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to Saturday. Yeah, I am too. I think it's going to be a, it's gonna be a fantastic uh, game just to see some of the young guys potentially get in play. You know, we didn't see C.J. Hicks. We didn't see some of the guys that we think could make an impact down the stretch. Uh, the season is so long, and games like this are really critical because you have to develop – your second and third team, those guys need to get reps. They need to get some experience. Even if it's not against uh, the most high level opponent, it still helps us uh, you know, in the stretch. Cause you know, we, you know, we look a little thinner at wide receiver. I mean, Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think there's no chance he's playing this week. He might not play the following week against Toledo. Um, and you need some of these guys to, uh, to uh, step up some of these young guys. You know, I think that, you know, Julian is dinged up pretty heavily. Uh, I, I know he's probably going to try to go, but I, I can't imagine he's going to go if he couldn't go against uh, Notre Dame. Why would he play against Arkansas State? Uh, Cam Babb is a kid who, God bless him, has had uh, multiple knee injuries, uh, another knee ding. So I don't know why you'd play him against Arkansas State. So I think, you know, with the four-game redshirt rule where kids can play in up to four games, I think that some of these young receivers better get strapped up and ready to rock. Uh, Nevada, you had some really interesting intel from inside the Woody Hayes uh Regarding Ryan Day and the performance of the offense, uh, obviously he was all smiles uh, in front of the uh, cameras. I think some of that was for show just due to the fact that there were so many recruits in town and, you know, you don't want to be sour after that performance. But uh, there's a little birdie telling you that maybe he wasn't so happy with the performance of the offense versus Notre Dame. Yeah, no, you know, Jim Trussell used to famously say that people need love the most when they deserve it the least. And, and I, I, which I've always been one of my favorite sayings. Um, I, I think, you know, when t things go bad, I think coaches, you know, the good coaches or the great coaches kind of pick guys up. They don't kick you when you're down. And when things go good or when you have some success, I think the coach is a little bit harder. Well, in this case, I think that Ryan Day, who I know, was uh, not happy with the offense. For the performance of Saturday night, you know, you had some, you still had some struggles in short yardage, got stopped one time, obviously had a number of three and outs, uh, definitely a, a hit and miss offense, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the game in a game that they should have dominated. Um, they didn't, they didn't until the end, until they started running the ball with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Then they started kind of establishing that dominance, some key throws from CJ along the way. But um, Brian was not happy. It was I, 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 they, he was described by my sources, very, very salty, about the offensive performance, um, you know, not happy with some of the decisions that CJ was making, not happy with some of the tempo that they were running. You know, they have that check with me stuff at the line, which personally I hate. 
Um, you know, when, when you go to the line, I think for a team like Ohio State, Ohio State should play fast. I think when you when you do that check with me stuff, it's almost like you're trying to fine tune it too much. You're trying to get the perfect call out there every time. And I think for the Ohio State, you know, I think sometimes it's better just let your kind of athleticism go. Make the play call, get it out to the guys, line them up, snap the ball, and let's go. And um, we never really developed that type of tempo. We never really developed, you know, that kind of uh, momentum. Um, I think Ryan was disappointed with the wide receiver group in terms of, you know, once Jackson Smith and Jigman went down, the guys came in, but they were they really getting the type of separation that we like to see? No, they weren't. And uh, you, when you go back and look at the all-22 film, you, you see kind of the throws that CJ was making. The ones he completed were into really narrow windows. The guys were not just running free, and, and he was throwing it out there. And so I think there's lots to improve between game one and two. Um, but, no, Ryan was not a happy camper regarding the offensive performance on Saturday night, and uh, I think the, the uh, guys on offense know that. Yeah, and, and I think that that's – you know, just it's kind of one of those things where when you're when you're dealing with the effort and you're dealing with the opponent, you know, in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, was this good enough to beat Georgia? Was this good enough to beat Bama? Was this good enough to beat the teams that we're going to see in the playoffs? And I don't believe it was. I think that, um, you know, there's been a lot made of our wide receivers and Mecca and Marvin Harrison. Uh, you know, they'll be just as good, if not better than Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. But I didn't see the separation that I think Ryan and Brian Hartland would would assume we would get versus a freshman corner and a, a secondary that frankly isn't on the level of Alabama or Georgia's. So, you know, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of good things that, to get tuned up on. And honestly, like I, I think it's kind of the perfect scenario for Ryan day and Kevin Wilson and Justin Fry, where, you know, they left a lot of meat on the bone. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of plays that it could have been better, little nuanced things that could have been done well. And, you know, I, I think that the, Maybe not the worst scenario, but maybe the scenario that uh, is the hardest to, to to deal with with a with a team. You know, we're here to play Arkansas State. Is that we just uh, that we just have you know a dominant performance, win fifty five to ten, and then you know you, you don't get guys as motivated going into these bye weeks. But when you have all these little things to fix, and this is you know my my player of the game, who you know I thought made a big impact. It didn't have a huge statistical game, but was impactful. Uh, JT Two Malau here, very first play of the game. Uh, coming after the quarterback, you know, gets a good hit. Obviously, gets a you know, a little bit high on the. Uh, I think it's kind of a cheap call, but um, you know, in terms of stock up, stock down, Nevada, uh, this was kind of the beginning of the end for Josh Proctor's day. I mean, this was a uh, this was a play where you know he misses uh, this initial tackle right here, and uh, yeah, I mean Jim Knowles had about as short of a hook as I've seen. You know, I don't know if he if he liked that he didn't trigger or you know, I mean, because this should be. This is an easy play. This is a this isn't a tough play for Josh to make, and you know takes a poor angle, misses the tackle. Uh, it's an explosive gain. Um, in terms of stock up, stock down, I, I can't imagine someone's stock dropped uh, lower after one week than Josh Proctor, a kid that uh, Jim Knowles himself called an All American in one of his preseason press conferences. He expected him to be in contention for the best safety in the country, and you know we get to our first game, and he lasts for about five plays before he gets pulled for Lathan Ransom. What was your reaction to that? Um, what's some of the things you've heard in the Woody Hayes? I think that it was, uh, you know, maybe a wake up call for Josh. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Lathan starts game too, because I thought he played fantastic. But uh, what was your reaction to to us seeing Josh Proctor for about five plays and him getting the hook? Well, I think you got to understand the backstory on that. The backstory on that is that Ohio State had practiced against that very play. They knew what Notre Dame was going to run on that. They Josh knew what his responsibilities were, um, and he was late took a poor angle, missed the tackle, and opened it up with a big play. And, and with Knowles, that's just, you know, verboten. Now, if you if notice the press conferences, I always look at the press conferences here, what they're saying and what they're not saying. You know, both Perry Eliano and, uh, and Ryan Day have gone out of their way to say, Josh is going to be big for us. We still need Josh. But they're trying to keep him engaged and keep him, you know, mentally from leaving the reservation, you know, after a hook like that. Because that was, that was pretty embarrassing. That was... You know, like you said, that's a guy that yeah. they were hyping as a preseason All-American, a preseason best safety in the country, and now he's on the bench, Lathan Ransom playing. And, you know, Lathan's a guy that I've been on for a long time. Um, I can remember when he was a freshman, and I was talking about how he had to get more playing time, and sure enough, he was going out there playing. So I'm a huge Lathan Ransom fan. But, I mean, Josh Proctor's an impact guy. He's an impact guy in a safety-driven defense, has got to be an impact player for Ohio State, and um, didn't play, but there's a reason for it. You know, if if you're late, if you take a poor angle, if you tackle high and you miss a guy, then you're not going to play. 
and uh, everybody on the defense knows that, and, and Josh Proctor certainly knows that. Yeah, and and, and uh, for those of you that are listening to this on Spreaker or uh, through Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, you know, I would check out our YouTube edition because we do have some film. Uh, this is what makes Mike Hall so great. Um, you know, he's playing nose. Generally, noses are the the heavier of the two between the three, but uh, Teron's actually playing the three here. He's here, but this quick little move by Mike Hall is something that is so difficult to go against. He's like a cat and he gets right into the hole and he makes the play. This is a play where it should be, you know, this should be generally an easy back block for the center if he just plays in his gap. But, you know, with Jim Knowles, I mean, he lets these guys, you know, kind of do their thing. So when, when Mike sees a pool guard, he's immediately, you know, they're, they're running a stunt here. They're running a, what we used to call, um, this is just a cross dog here. So, you know, he's he's flipping gaps. You know, you got an insert, an insert up here. And, you know, the, the linebackers end up reading out of it. You know, Steele does a great job here because he reads out of it because he sees he sees guard pull. He doesn't insert. He reads out of it and goes to the ball. And, you know, you just see the, the, the you know, you got four red shirts on the ball carrier immediately. Short gain, um, you know, on a play where we literally called the exact wrong stunt. We were, you know, we were running a blitz into the you know away from the run and steel was good enough to read out of it and my call makes the tackle for a short three yard gain um who else uh you know stock up obviously uh it's easy my call any other guys that were stock downs for you i mean obviously josh was one that was it was embarrassing um you know i, I don't know if there's there's other guys there's some defensive guys that um i think are gonna fall a little bit out of the rotation but is there anybody else that you think needs to step their game up going into these next two weeks well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I always, I like the stock up portion, the stock down thing. I hate kind of, you know, if it's perceived as banging on kids, but you know, we've got to get more production out of guys like Zach Harrison and Tron Vincent and Gene Baptiste, you know what I'm saying? Like we've, we've, yeah. we've got, you know, those are the guys, those, those veteran defensive linemen have got to be better because if you look at the plays, even the plays where they're not making the tackles, but they're stopping it up, it's always the younger guys. And, you know, we've, we've got to get some of the older guys to come in there and, and you know, make, you know, play the veterans they are, make some of the veteran plays. And, you know, the, right now the, the Ohio State defense is, is so, you know, freshman and sophomore, you know, eligibility driven uh, that it's crazy. You know, the, the, those are our best players on the defense right now. It's like the super softs. And um, I just think some of those those older guys have got to step up and play. And, and, I, and, I, and I think that there's lots of time, you know, the – you know, Jim Knowles hasn't even uh, activated half of the, the uh, defensive sets that they're running yet, and this defense is only going to get better and better as the season goes on. Lots of time to do it, but that's, I like to see some of the older guys step up and make plays like we know they can. Yeah, and uh, here this is, again, this is all Mike Hall. Again, this is a simple duo play where it's it's basically like a no-pull power play where you have two double teams on the two interior guys up to the two linebackers, and then you just have single blocks on the outside uh, real simple play, and Mike Hall blows it up by not being static, by swimming around, by being what I like to call slippery, hard to hang on to, gets right in the hole. Um, you know, these guys aren't easy to block. I mean, these guys are, you know, him and Toronto are both, they're both moving, they're shifting, swimming over these double teams, and and it, this is hard to go against. I mean, you know, when guys aren't going to sit in there and, and kind of hold their gap and they're going to move like that, it is it is a pain to go against, so... My call, back to back huge plays. Uh, again, I think that you know he, he's been uh, as good as as there's been uh, in terms of being a, an impact defensive tackle. In terms of a pass rushing defensive tackle, he's as good as I've seen in a long time. I mean, I, I don't even know, um, maybe Draymond or you know, but for for as small as he is and as quick as he is and as active and he's physically fit, he doesn't seem to wear down. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about him. Here we're. Uh, Showing zero pressure, we drop out of it. We do a double twist uh, again, like you know, with these twists. You know, the guy that goes first here is the penetrator, and then he's the looper. And when whoever the penetrator is, basically is giving himself up for the looper. So you know, your your D tackles are both <laughs> penetrating here. This is what you call T E because he's the tackle, he's the end. You know, so you got your tackle, you got your end. Yeah, so you run this. The first guy basically tries to take two, take the guard and tackle, absorb them both. His job basically is to make sure that this guard can't make the switch. You know, and when you look at it, neither of the guards get clean 
you know, I mean, really, it's two holding calls. Like, this is a hold right here all day, and this is a hold right here all day. So uh, the guys did a great job. You know, I think that um, Toronto does a nice job. You know, it's, it's hard for him to keep contained there and see it, but, they, you know, the guys rallied to the ball. And, again, like, you know, these guys, you know, guys like Steele that can really run and Tommy Eckenberg can really run and playing three safeties, you know, those guys can cover ground and get, you know, these mobile quarterbacks on the ground because that was something that we were worried about a little bit going into the game was the – the running quarterback, but it really didn't affect us because, you know, we have so much speed on the field now, especially at linebacker Um Nevada, you know, going forward over these next two weeks, um, how cautious are you with guys like Jackson Smith and Jigba? Obviously, I don't think we're going to see him the next two weeks. Uh, Matt Jones got dinged up. Luke Wickler might've been a little dinged up. Uh, you know, Matt actually came out of the game for three plays. Enoch came in and did a fantastic job. Um, great job by our defense holding them to a field goal here. But how cautious are you holding guys the next two weeks uh, you know, during these tune-up games before we, we see the Wisconsin in, um, in three weeks? Well, I think you got to use the games this way. This is the reason why you schedule games like this. You schedule games like this to kind of it's extended practice for you, and uh, it's a chance for you to get healthy before you play a te you know, team like Wisconsin. No reason to get anybody hurt. Um, we've got, you know, the, the best thing about week one is we avoided any major injuries, just a little bit of nagging stuff right now. Let's get guys healthy before the Big Ten you know, season goes, and uh, hopefully our good luck continues with the injury. You know, injury bug seems to to bite teams, in, you know, in big things, but it happens, it kind of avalanches. So I, even talking about it seems like bad mojo, so I'm going to knock on wood that, uh, that we avoid that going forward. And, you know, for Ohio State, you know, you're just so deep. You've got guys that are just, you know, itching to play, can't wait for their opportunity to shine. And, you know, you mentioned guys like C.J. Hicks and Sonny Styles and Kai Stokes and, you know, guys, you know, Chip Grantham that we haven't seen yet that I can't wait to see. And I can't wait to, to watch this Saturday to see them running around because when they're out there for them, you know, this is their chance to play. So they're going to be out there playing hard. It's, you know, the uh, the fans may be thinking that it's, it's about covering the spread or that time to go early and go get a hot dog or something like that. But for these guys – this is their Super Bowl, and they're going to be balling out. So um, I know I'm going to be watching closely no matter what the score is on this Saturday. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that's uh, – it's good to see, you know, when you're – some of these young guys, I mean, you know, they got to realize that the depth chart is not a permanent thing. The depth chart is – it's very much a living, breathing thing. I think Josh Proctor found that out the hard way uh, with Lathan, Lathan Ransom coming right in, taking his spot. Uh you know, and, and I remember that, you know, like when we played uh, Washington in, in 03, uh, Brandon Mitchell started off and then Nate Sally and then Nate Sally ended up taking over. And, you know, a lot of these spots are going to be up for grabs. And, you know, Jim Knowles is a guy. And again, with, with Josh, I don't know if there was anything that went on behind the scenes. You know, if he if he had a bad practice week or if he wasn't paying attention in meetings, because it, it seemed like, you know, for him to get a hook that quick after what seemingly, you know, maybe two mistakes out of six plays. It just, you know, it, it seemed like there was something else going on leading up to the game other than just that. But, um, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, I think our sixth offensive lineman is Enoch. Uh, it, you know, it, it proved it when Matt Jones got hurt. Enoch came running into the game and did a fantastic job on that huge drive. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, I'd like to see Zen Mikulski get some, some run, uh, you know, Josh Fryer, you know, Ben Christman. We got a, a lot of young guys. You know, here was a – this is a sack. This is on Donovan. You know, this is not a not a great set by him. Um, pretty easy look, too. But, uh, you know, and, and the, but, you know, Notre Dame is going to heat us up. They bring – you know, they bring six, and, you know, they're playing zero coverage, and they wanted – that was their game plan. They wanted to run bare and play uh, some zero and bring the heat on us. And, you know, we adapted to it after that. Donnie actually had a fantastic game outside of about three plays. He really played well, and – he was moving guys, and he's only going to get better and more comfortable going forward. I thought our tackles were really, really good. Um, you know, there are a few plays that I'm sure they both wanted back, but uh, given the fact that I was worried about Isaiah Foskey and they shut him down, didn't even hear his name the entire game, it was uh, it was real good. You know, the guy that was, was awful it was CJ. Like CJ, you know, this is an easy throw right here. You know, there's protections absolutely perfect, nice in breaking route, and he just you know just duffs it. You know, so. And again, you're not going to be perfect. He's not a robot, but you know he was he was a little off on some of these. And and I thought that you know my offensive player of the game was Marvin Harrison Jr. and he dropped a touchdown. And you know was, you know, guys were just kind of a little bit off. They weren't as impactful as I thought they'd be. But you know Notre Dame was much better than Utah was in the back end, obviously. And that you know I, I think Notre Dame's a probably a B a B ish type program this year. Um, 
I don't think they're super talented, but I think that they've got some good players and uh it'll be interesting to see how they how they go the rest of the year. Um any final remarks, Nevada? You know, this is a, a little bit of a lull in the schedule before Wisconsin, but any thoughts on how uh you know how you want the week to progress, how you want uh what you want to see this week, you know, who you want to see play. Uh, maybe predict any young guys you think are going to stand out this week. Well, I, I want to see the backup QBs. I want to see both of them. You know, Kyle and Devin. Mm-hmm. It, it's it always that's always been a kind of a fascinating you know story. Just the, the backup quarterback position, and you always you, you know in every great Ohio State season, you need the backup quarterback to come in and make a play. Those guys yeah. will get a chance to shine, and you know they're going to be playing hard. So we'll see that. We'll see. We see the uh, we'll see Joe Royer this weekend. Who's again? I know. The, helping technician had come out with some raves on Joe Royer's, you know, saying he was one of the, the the best tight end prospects that he's ever seen. So I'd like to see him a little bit this weekend as well. You know, defensively, obviously, you know, guys like Kai Stokes, who I just, uh, I just can't say enough good things about him and, you know, more Jordan Hancock, Jacqueline Johnson. So, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. This weekend's going to be fun. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to the game and just sitting down and watching it and enjoying it without the, the stress of possibly losing that, you know, and, and, you know, you never like to say that about a game, but there's really no way that Ohio State can lose the game. So it's a, uh, it's a chance for us to have a nice extended practice this weekend and see some of the young guys. And that's, that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. And this is uh if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the second drive of the, of the game. And, and Jim Knowles did deploy the Jack uh, here is Jack playing the Jack or the Leo or whatever you want to call it. Um, Kind of a middle linebacker hybrid look, you know, you've got, you know, you've got JT, uh, you know, they put Mike Hall, they put all kinds of guys at that other end. Um, Mike really does a nice job. And, and Jack just kind of, you know, he just, you know, picks where he, you know, he inserts that here. You know, there's it's a pull play away from him. And, you know, he, he it's a really tough look for the offense because you don't know where he's going to insert at and you don't really have time to adjust because he, he literally starts off over the right guard and he walks over to over the left guard and, you know, is he going to come in the A gap? Is he going to come in the B gap? He ends up coming in the B gap, and you know the the center's got to you know basically back block to him, he, and he doesn't have any time to help the nose out here. Uh, so it, again, it's 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 a tough look, and this is coming from a guy who's I've been an offensive line coach, I've been an offensive lineman, and you know, like when you've got guys that are moving like that, and it's a guy who's a two hundred and seventy pound defensive end who can run the way Jack can, it sucks. It's really hard to go against him. Kudos to Jim Knowles for for implementing this and and using it on running downs because generally when people see this three down looking front, they assume it's going to be a nickel. It's going to be a passing down type thing. But Jim Knowles figured out he could do this, you know, on rundowns. And so here you've got you you put Mike Hall out at the end over here. You got JT Tumlo and then you have Teron at the zero nose. And here's Jack Sawyer just kind of walking around, you know, figuring out where he's going to go. Um, You know, he loads up to the the tight end side. And again, this is call specific. Um, I'm sure that there's some times where he can kind of freelance, but generally, you know, he'll call Jack and, you know, they'll say, all right, now you got to go wide nine or, you know, they also teach him to adjust based off the strength of the formation where you see these two tight ends here. Um, you know, the odds of it being a run heavy is uh, are pretty, pretty strong. And it is, you know, it's a, it's a run to the left where the two tight ends are, you have like a little cross action, but again, it's just, it's, it's a tough look for this tight end. Uh, you know, you've got all this ex- all these extra bodies in the box. Uh, you know, you got the the safety coming across, or excuse me, you got the uh, the corner coming across with the jet motion. Um, you know, with the zero coverage, and and again, like we muck it up, and they don't get anything out of it. So that's the uh, the beautiful thing about the confusion of Jim Knowles' defense. And and again, like as an offensive lineman, this stuff is miserable to go against. So i like that it's good for ohio state it's good to be hard to go against and hard to game plan for and hard to adjust to um you know because again the first drive you didn't see the jack second drive you saw the jack uh we ran some of it the rest of the way but you just you never know when it's going to be deployed um here you know you got you got jack going to the boundary this time uh super wide super wide nine down here and again like i, I could watch this stuff all day just because i love watching it but um you know, it's just it's just a funky thing, and then, you know, you look huge draw, and you know they don't they can't get to the linebacker because they gotta they gotta account for the down guys, and you know Jack ends up being you know a drop guy here, and you know it's 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 a it's a tough look, and I, I love watching it. So uh, lock this thing down, Nevada. Any uh, parting uh, parting shots for the uh, Scoop family as we uh, as we head to the message boards? 
Uh, just, you know, if you want to become a little smarter fan, you know, find out some stuff that you don't know, maybe you haven't heard before, you know, you like inside information, then subscribe to buyscoop.com. That's we're kind of the home of uh, inside information on Ohio State football and college football in, in particular. And um, we'd love to have you be part of the Scoop family. It's a, it's a great place to hang out and be more educated about what's going on and be the best fan. So we'll, we'll see you on the message board. That's perfect. I love it. Appreciate you guys. As always, we are growing like crazy on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Please like this episode. It is a humongous help for us as we grow our channel. Um, you know, thank you guys so much for all you guys are doing. Uh, can't do it without you guys. We try to crank great content every day, uh, for free on YouTube. So you guys can enjoy it. Um, you know, best inside information in the game, BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, if you guys really want to get involved, if you guys really want to be a part of the best Ohio community, subscribe to BuckeyeScoop.com. It is the place to be. Uh, if you haven't ever been a part of an online message board community, it is a very fun place. We have some very high level people on here, some high, uh, high level inside information. Give us a try. You might love it. So as always, um, you know, give, give us a comment. What young guys do you want to see in the game? And, uh, you know, where are you guys from? You know, I, I always get curious because, you know, I have people saying, no, thank you for, you know, I'm in Iraq. You know, I'm in, I'm in Hawaii. Thanks. I'm, I'm out of state. I don't have the local news stuff uh, to keep me informed. Thank you, Kirk, for doing that for me. So, uh, drop where you guys are from. I'm always real curious to see where the audience is at. And I uh, really appreciate you guys as always. So um, thank you so much, Scoop family. Thank you, Buckeye Nation. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Go Bucks.